Thank you and good afternoon, everyone. I'm Professor Reed. And I'm Emmanuel Taylor. And we're dressed in character, tweed, <laughs> jeans. And we'd like to talk to you today about advancing electric power grid technologies, a radical yet practical way of rethinking our grid. And in many respects, we're going to pick up where Arun left off in terms of his discussion on the grid. We're going to talk about the role of power electronics in that expansion, in that radical rethinking of the grid, and some of the movements that are taking place. We're going to go back to the future to do it. As many of you know, well over a century ago, at the turn of the 20th century, a fierce battle was fought between great men, Westinghouse, Tesla, and Edison, over whether or not the world would be illuminated with alternating current or direct current. And as Arun pointed out, that world is becoming more and more illuminated. Westinghouse, Edison, and Tesla set the stage for what eventually became a world driven by alternating current, and for all the right reasons at that time. We built up the majority of our electrical grids in the 1930s to 1970s, over a half century ago. And we still rely mostly on that same grid today to deliver that power. Yet many things have changed since that time. One is the advent of the transistor and what became power electronics based technologies, which we've taken from small radios to today into the large high voltage one million volt grids to improve efficiency and to create opportunity around improving electric power delivery and integrating energy resources. At the same time, many things are beginning to happen at the load levels. Most of what we use today in terms of end use, most of the equipment in this room, backstage, our home electronics, in our office, our laptop computers, our data centers, are all driven by DC power, low voltage DC. Yet today, we continue to plug those loads into a 120 volt legacy AC outlet. We are proposing to begin to rethink how that is done and to build more DC infrastructure into the system. And it's not just our loads, it's emerging resources such as solar energy, which produce a DC product. We want to look at how we begin to move that energy around more effectively. If I just start with the context of renewable energies, one of the things we're trying to do in this country is to produce a clean, smart grid environment. A lot of that clean energy comes from resources like nuclear, gas, clean coal, but also wind and solar as we begin to develop them. However, a lot of the wind is located in the central plain states, far offshore. Most of the high penetrations of solar are in the far west. We haven't built a transmission grid to move that energy to where we use it where we live, work, and play, which isn't in those areas. Expanding the grid and using DC voltage transmission is a way to do that more effectively than legacy AC networks. So at the high voltage level, we have been looking at an interstate highway of electrons, if you will, using DC technologies today with power electronics that reduce losses, that improve efficiency, that create getter greater economic gains in terms of how we deliver energy from where we produce it to where we use it. And if you look at this map, it's not just wind and solar. It's a comprehensive set of energy production capabilities that are clean, efficient, and especially reliable and economic. Clean coal, gas, and nuclear, they are all comprehensively a part of our future. And we need to be able to tap these resources and move them around as efficiently as we produce them. And in a way, that brings us to today, to the present. We're already beginning to look at plans to expand our grid in this high voltage DC manner. There's much to be done, and there's a lot ahead in the future. And to represent that future is one of our tremendous and talented graduate students, Emmanuel Taylor. Oh, thank you, Dr. Reed. Uh, so, when at the onset of the electric power industry, we used DC technology in order to power our cities, but due to limitations in the technology at that time, that's about as far as we can go, is our cities. And so AC infrastructure won out as a means to be able to interconnect cities. In these modern times, we're doing more than interconnecting cities, we're interconnecting nations. We're no longer transferring power couple hundred miles, but several hundreds of miles. And as Dr. Reed mentioned, high voltage DC technology 
is the technology that we use to interconnect nations, to move generation resources over several hundred miles, as well as to bring uh, power from offshore. We're using high voltage DC technology, and we've mentioned some of the DC that goes on at the low voltage side as well. However, even high voltage HVDC technology has always been used as a bridge between two AC systems. So far, we have never connected a high voltage DC generation resource or any type of DC generation resource directly to our DC loads on a bulk level. Even HVDC has always been used as a means to connect two AC systems. So there's a great potential to build a bridge from DC to DC, as well as a bridge back to the future. So we're looking back to DC. However, the DC that we're using in this era is different from the DC of before, and the difference is semiconductor technology. Right? So we're used to the computer chips inside of our, com uh, inside of our electronic devices that enable us to switch low voltage and low power. The devices on the electric grid have a much higher capacity, and they give us the ability to control and regulate the flow of electricity throughout the grid. And we call these devices power electronic devices. Now, we've seen great benefit in using power electronic devices on the high voltage grid, but the challenges of this generation require that we take what we've learned and what we've benefited from on the high voltage level, and we transmit that to the medium voltage level, into the distribution grid. This is where we live. This is our cities, right? And as humanity grows in population and energy demand, and as we tend towards increased urbanization, we need better infrastructure and better control within the distribution grid. What you see here in this diagram is a method for interconnecting any type of generation resource with any type of load. It doesn't matter if it's a variable generation uh, resource like wind or solar, or if it's a, a base load like nuclear, something that we're used to that's dispatchable. Using this mechanism of a DC bus infrastructure on a high or medium voltage level, coupled with electrical storage and power electronics, we can smooth out any generation resource and supply any type of load. So this is a plug and play technology that allows us to couple different types of generation resources with different types of loads. And it's empowered by power electronics and DC infrastructure. Now, the DC concept is caught on on a low voltage level. And we've seen worldwide in data centers, people are migrating toward a 400 volt DC standard for distributing electric power within their facilities. And it's motivated by increased efficiency, less space utilization, less heat being required. And we can expect to see the same type of thing extend into our commercial buildings and into our residences as well. In a modern home, 80% of the electricity that we use is consumed in electronics, not in traditional uh, motor devices. Thank you. And so since we're using increasing DC technology, that, those loads are better served with a DC infrastructure. So our view of the smart grid is going to be a collection of different types of generation and distribution resources that allow us to better control the flow of electricity. All in between, regardless of the way that we generate the resources, and we're finding new ways to generate and use electricity, but at every point in between, power electronics are going to be an essential technology in order to condition, control, and optimize the delivery of electric generation resources. So just to finish up, the great opportunity here is that in terms of what we can do from a national security and really a national growth perspective. We're talking about new ways of re rebuilding the grid, new technologies leading to technology developments that lead to opportunities for business growth, that leads to economic growth, and ultimately to jobs. This is the era we're in. We need to be the nation. We need to be the people that bring that future together. And while I'm talking about the future, I just wanted to add one more thing. As I look around this morning and yesterday and throughout the conference, there's only a handful of people that are represented by Emmanuel and his generation here. And I encourage all of you to meet Emmanuel and talk to him. As you can see, he's articulate, he's passionate, he's intelligent and committed to what he's doing. He is our future. His generation, the Point Park performers at the beginning of the day today, they represent this future in this future of change that we've been talking about at this conference. Talk to him. Our job as educators, as mentors, as managers, are to inspire and to motivate. People like Emmanuel make that job easy. 
Again, I encourage you to meet him and talk to him. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you.